What's up guys, today we're in for a real treat. You're looking at Nike's very first product catalog ever from 1973. This catalog has been buried in Mark Covert's garage for, I don't know, at least the last few decades. And just last week, Covert sent me some pics of the catalog and said, what do you think of this? And I said, man, I need that. And so here it is. Along with the catalog, Covert also sent me an autographed copy of his new book, Never Missed. Have a look in here and you can see the autograph. He wrote Jordan for being such a good friend, Mark Covert. Thank you very much for the signed book, Mark. So Mark ran every single day for 45 years straight without missing a day. And that's what this book is all about. During his streak in 1972, Covert became the first person ever to cross a finish line wearing Nike waffles. And he did that in the Olympic trials marathon wearing moon shoes. A year later in 1973, Covert went on to run one of Nike's earliest retail stores in Garden Grove, California, and that's where he got this catalog from. The earliest Nike retail stores were called the Athletic Department. Let's have a look at the back of the catalog before we get into it. So you'll notice right here that it says BRS, which of course stands for Blue Ribbon Sports. Before Nike was Nike, the company was called Blue Ribbon Sports, and Phil Knight and Bill Bowerman used to import shoes from Japan. The shoes were called Onitsuka Tigers, and they would sell them in the United States. In 1972, BRS changed their name to Nike, and in 1973, Nike made their very first product catalog. Before we open it up and get into the catalog, I want to show you what we'll be using as a paperweight because it's very cool too. Check this out. This is a miniature version of Nike's Prospectus from their initial public offering in 1982. So it's a completely miniature version of every single page in the Prospectus. Very cool. So that's what we'll be using as a paperweight. Let's flip open the plastic cover. It's crazy how this has got a plastic cover and bound like this. They definitely don't make things like they used to. In fact, I don't even think they make Nike catalogs anymore. So anyway, let's have a look right here. You'll notice that page one starts with Nike written in bold capital letters. And you've got a caricature of someone playing soccer and someone running track over here, as well as pictures from the 1972 Olympic Games, which were in Munich. When we flip the page, the catalog starts off talking about research and we see a picture of Bill Bowerman and John McKay. And this section of the catalog talks about these two coaches, along with a bunch of other people that spend tireless amounts of time and energy researching the needs of the athletes to make shoes for them. When we flip the page over here, we see the Athlete Advisory Board. Nike has always been about serving the athlete, even in the earliest days. And so here are some of the athletes that were on the Nike advisory board. Jeff Petrie, he was a basketball player that played for the Portland Trailblazers. Wayne Wells was a wrestler. Illy Nastasi, a tennis player. And then on this page, we start getting into technical information having to do with the shoes, specifically the pre-Montreal, which was made for Steve Prefontaine to wear in the Montreal Olympics of 1976. When we flip the page over here, we start talking about some of the technologies in Nike shoes, the midsoles, the outer soles, the nylon track plates, something called Sintrack down here. And then we start to get into the shoes over here. We start with the track and field section, no surprise, Nike was born on the track, Hayward Field to be exact, which is the track at the University of Oregon that right now doesn't exist because it's under major renovation. But anyway, here's the track and field section, starting off with the pre-Montreal 
and the Americas. These were the two most popular and highest end Nike track spikes. And then when we flip the page here, we see some of the other really early Nike track spikes. Here's the Interval, and then over here, the Canada Quick Four, that's the Pan Am. And then we get a close up look down here at the Nike spikes themselves. We'll flip the page. These pages are so thick, they're like poster board almost. And then we get into the Cortez, one of the first Nike models ever. And over here, more Cortezes, the suede Cortez Deluxe, the leather Cortez, the nylon Cortez, and of course, a picture of Steve Prefontaine running in the Cortez. Here's the Boston 73, which is a shoe that initially was named the Obori, but then was renamed the Boston 73. And we flip to the next page of track and field and we see the Finland and the Kenya. The Finland would be the blue pair. The Kenya would be the red pair. And then the Roadrunner suede. Over here is the cross country. And then the marathon in two different colors, blue and red. And over here, we see the shot and disc shoe, which is very cool because it shows that very early on, Nike was making shoes specific for certain sports and events. So there's the shot and disc shoe. We'll flip the page and get into basketball, of course, with Jeff Petrie, Nike's earliest basketball poster boy. No surprise, he played for the Portland Trail Blazers, and Nike was based out of Oregon, and still is, of course. So on this first page, you see the blazer high and the Bruin low. And of course, it says whites right here because most basketball shoes in those days were white and made out of leather. But as we flip the page over here, check this out, we see suede's and you see the Bruin in low top and the blazer in high top right here in these bright, colorful suede uppers which were very different than what most sneakers looked like at the time. These colors were one of the earliest ways that Nike shoes stood out from other sneakers. Over here, we get into wrestling shoes. These are the Nike Greco in white and black and in black and white. And when we flip the page here, we see another wrestling shoe made specifically for Wayne Wells and it was called the Wayne Wells Autograph shoe. When we flip the page here, you'll see that Nike made Wayne Wells a training shoe. That's what the WW up here is for, Wayne Wells training shoe. And they made it in blue and in red. And then over here on this page, Nike was even making volleyball shoes way back in the earliest days of the company. We flip the page and get in to tennis right here and we'll flip the page again and see more tennis shoes right here notice that the tennis shoes are bright and colorful just like those basketball shoes that we just looked at and then the catalog wraps up showing bags right here you can see four different versions of early nike bags very cool and we flip the page and get a couple blank pages, and then the plastic cover. And there you have it. Nike's very first product catalog ever. Thank you very much, Mark Covert, for the catalog and for the signed book. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.